Let's talk about Moloch architecture and deployments. On the Moloch wiki, we have an architecture page that goes over some of the common deployments and what they look like. This page is a great place to start to learn how to get started with Moloch. Moloch is made up of several different components. The capture component is what reads the traffic off of the network, parses it, and creates the metadata that's sent to Elasticsearch. The viewer piece is what an operator uses to view the metadata and to view the PCAP. WISE is an optional piece, stands for with intelligence see everything, that's used to add intelligence to the metadata. Elasticsearch is our database. It does all of the metadata storage and searching. And then the PCAP files are stored locally to disk wherever capture is running. There must be a capture and viewer pair on every host that's capturing. But all these other components, the WISE and Elasticsearch, can run centralized if desired. We don't really recommend a single host deployment other than for demos and for really low bandwidth networks. More common is a multi-host monitoring set setup. In this instance here, we have three machines all running capture and viewer and storing local PCAP files. Each of them are monitoring a separate network segment using either their mirrors or taps. It doesn't really matter. And they're setting the metadata over the network to a centralized Elasticsearch cluster. We also have Ys running off to the side here. All of these nodes are sharing the same Y system. And then we also have a viewer and Apache system running separately. And this is where the operators will come. And they will hit this Apache, which will do the authentication, which will talk to this viewer, which will proxy all the traffic to all the other viewer systems and Elasticsearch. By default, Moloch only supports digest authentication. So if you want to use another form of authentication, you have to use a reverse proxy in front of it, such as Apache. If you're monitoring a high network bandwidth network, you'll usually want to use a network packet broker. And instead of each of the taps or mirror ports connecting directly to a capture node, you would have them talk to the network packet broker, and the network packet broker will load balance the traffic across all the nodes. We have another video that we'll link to that where we talk a lot more about network packet brokers. Otherwise, this uh, diagram is the same as the previous. Eventually, if you're really into Moloch, you'll have multiple deployments. In this instance, let's pretend that we have one deployment, which is our office deployment up here, and one instance, which is our production deployment down here. They each have their own Elasticsearch cluster and everything else, but they can share a WISE system. When the operator comes in, they're still going to be talking to the same Apache server for authentication, but you'll have three different URL endpoints for the th three different networks here. So we have the viewer 1, which is going to be our office deployment. We have our viewer 2, which is our production deployment. And then we also have what we call the multi-viewer that allows you to uh, search across multiple Moloch clusters. So how do you decide how to scale up your Moloch and what to buy? So in the Moloch page, we have an Estimators tab. The Estimators tab is a great place to start. It allows you to input a few variables, and it will spit out what kinds of machines that you need to buy, or how, how many. So let's say we want to monitor an average of 2 gigabits per second. And we need to have 60 days of retention. We're using 10 terabyte drives, 20 drives per machine. We think we have about 20% TLS. And we don't want to go over 3 gigabits per second per machine. It's going to calculate for you that you need over 1 petabyte of disk space. And with the size and number of disks you chose, if you use RAID 0, you'll need 6 hosts. 
RAID 5, 7 hosts, and RAID 6, 7 hosts. We personally usually deploy with RAID 6, because then we don't have to worry unless we lose more than two drives. So we need to buy seven of these hosts. Elasticsearch is going to use the same input up here, and it's going to calculate similar information. Again, you get to decide what your retention days are. A lot of times you want a longer retention for your Elasticsearch. We usually do double. Let's say we aren't, we're only going to use eight terabyte drives. We only use four disks per machine, one Elasticsearch node, and let's uh, say we're going to do replication. So in this case, you're actually given three choices on what you think your traffic looks like about how much space is going to be required. The great thing about Elasticsearch is it's always easy to add new nodes. So feel free to start with the lower number. However, if you work in an organization where getting machines is hard, you might want to start with the highest number. So in this case, we usually do um, RAID 5, but it's totally up to you. And let's pretend that we have just a high DNS traffic. So we would need 13 hosts for our Elasticsearch. So what kinds of hosts should someone buy? So for both Capture and Elastic, we have links to the FAQ where we talk about that. So for Capture machines, we usually recommend big data machines. Both 2RU and 4RU machines are out there. They're not that expensive. 4RU is going to be cheaper. 2RU is going to be smaller, although sometimes they're a little bit deeper. And we go over some of the requirements. Basically, you just need to make sure you have maybe at least 64 gigs of memory, you have a decent RAID card, and you have a lot of disks. We also strongly recommend just Intel NICs, and don't spend a lot of money on expensive NICs. We have similar information for the Elasticsearch. With Elasticsearch, you usually just want to go with a small 1RU box that has maybe room for four drives and a, a decent RAID card.